Bruh, college is picking up so fast, holy moly. I literally already had an essay due, and I've had like 5 bazillion pages of homework. Or at least it feels that way, but like, still, a lot of homework. And that stuff is all on top of like clubs, teaching, like self-studying stuff that I'm trying to do. <laughs> like, it's kind of getting crazy. So I am sorry, but I think I'm gonna go to one video a week because there are so many cool things to do in college and I wanna like, be able to do all that stuff too. But of course, I wanna give you guys the videos that you guys like, so if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments and I will be sure to do that. But anyways, let us get on to the point of the video. And honestly, like what I was talking about, it's kind of the point of the video, but let us get on to the more specific point of the video. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today I wanted to talk about how epic college courses are. Because even though they're hard, I actually am having a really, really good time. When I was in high school, I used to hear all kinds of things about college classes. Like everybody agreed that like the social life in college is good. Everybody agreed that the freedom in college is amazing. Everybody agreed that cooking and chores and all that nonsense in college sucked. But what people didn't seem to agree on is like how good college classes are. Cause I heard some people say, oh, the college classes are so hard, they're so nasty. I hated them. And then there's like other people who are like, whoa, the college courses are so interesting and that kind of thing. Of course, this might have depended on like what classes they took in college and that kind of thing. But I think for me, college classes have been overwhelmingly epic on like so many levels. So I just wanted to tell you guys some more about it. So you high school boys and freshman boys who have not moved in yet have something to look forward to. Now, full disclaimer, okay, I don't want to roast any of my high school teachers, okay? I liked a lot of my high school teachers. And this is by no means a diss to high school classes because high schools have a way different target audience. And like, they have way different resources, okay? Like, Berkeley is literally a college with so many people and so much more money than any high school that like, I don't expect high schools to do everything that I talk about in this list. Like, it makes sense. But at the same time, I do think there are some things that college actually does way better than high schools that high schools could learn from. So let us get into the reasons why college classes are so much better than high school classes, in my opinion. The first one is kind of obvious, but the classes just cover way more interesting topics. And obviously this makes sense, right? College students know more stuff so you could go more in depth. And obviously that's why you have more class offerings. But still though, the difference is kind of insane. Like you guys probably know that I kind of like CS, right? But at my high school, the most advanced CS course that we had was, you guessed it, AP CSA. <laughs> oh my God, bruh. If any of you guys have taken AP CSA, you guys probably know that it does not count as a CS class by any stretch of the imagination, okay? <laughs> And like even with other classes, like the most interesting class I took was literally AP Chemistry and I'm not even that interested in chemistry. Like AP Chemistry was the only class where I actually learned something and it was something I was mildly interested in. But at Berkeley dude, I am literally struggling to decide what to take. There's so many things to take. Like there's literally so many cool classes just taught by like professors, right? There's machine learning, there's operating systems, there's programs and compilers, there's algorithms and stuff. And at the same time, there's literally like student run classes too that are also really good. There's like decentralized finance. There's like, I don't know, there's so many. There's like PCB boards. There's ML, of course. <laughs> but basically there's so much variety, right? Like there's so many cool classes you could take. Like right now, out of the five classes I'm taking, three of them are super, super interesting. And that is pretty insane considering that I took seven classes every year. And the only interesting class in all of those years was newspaper. <laughs> Also, no offense to the two classes that I said are not that interesting to me, like circuits and my English class. I'm just not into that, okay? Like my circuits class is like a mix of Linalge and circuits. I'm sure the circuit stuff will be kind of interesting, but right now, we're literally learning how to solve linear equations and multiply matrices. That's the stupidest stuff in the world, okay? <laughs> Bro. I mean, yeah, it's fair. Like people had to learn that at some point, but come on, that's just pre-calc stuff. I'm in college, man. I don't want to go back to like ninth grade. Bro, the other three I'm taking are so cool though. Like I'm taking intro to mem. And they're literally teaching us how to make these tiny micro motors. I don't know if I'll put a like, picture up on the screen there. They're teaching us about like photolithography, etching, like all the cool stuff like cantilevers and that kind of thing. And you can literally make motors that are a micron thick. They're like, okay, I can't even make like that small of a thing with my fingers. It's crazy. And I'm also taking this lab, Biomem and Nanotech. And in our first lab, we literally made a chip. We literally got to run through the whole photolithography process by ourselves. And then the third one is discrete math and probability. I've talked about this one like 500 times, but it's actually so interesting. Like you're learning proofs and graph theory. Like yes, this is stuff that I've learned for AMC and that kind of thing, but it's still interesting. It's like good to go back to math. I love math, okay? So it's a really fun class. If you guys are interested in supporting me and you guys like are interested in what kind of stuff I do every week, I'm literally posting blogs weekly on my Patreon. So it's literally just $5 a month and you get access to my weekly blog and live solve. So I would really appreciate it. The other benefit is you get direct access to me. You can ask me whatever you want. We could talk about stuff. It'll be fun. But before I get too distracted, let's continue where we left off. No more plugging, bruh. Got, gotta keep the plugging out of here. The other nice thing about these classes is like they don't baby you at all, okay? They teach the important stuff a little bit carefully, right? They make sure that everybody understands the important stuff, but then they go like a lot more in depth for like the people who are already got the basics and want to learn more. And that's like really nice, right? Because then the people who are just learning it for the first time get to learn the stuff properly. And then the people who already learned it get to like learn some new stuff at the same time. I think this is definitely something that teachers could do because I feel like a lot of AP teachers end up like just teaching 
the bare bones AP curriculum and like not doing anything else, but I think they could do this and it'll be a lot more interesting for everybody. All right, well, that's all I got to say about the classes having really interesting topics, but somewhat on the same vein and somewhat not, college classes are literally 50 times more flexible. Like what I mean by flexible is that you could take literally whatever the heck you want. For each major, I literally only had to take six basic each classes, right? And I've already taken three and keep in mind that these are semester long classes. So I basically only have three more semesters of these low level classes, then four semesters of humanities and a single physics course, okay? That's it. That's all the requirements I have. For the rest, I can take literally whatever I want, okay? Berkeley doesn't even enforce prerequisites. Like, I'm taking EE 147 without taking a single EE course ever in my life. For the bio lab, I'm gonna leave with grad students and like seniors and that kind of thing, and it literally has a prerequisite for bio 104, which is like biological transfer systems, and they still let me take it. What's really nice about this is that I could take it earlier and get to actually use it earlier and then finish all the boring stuff that's not actually gonna help me that much later when I'm like already learned the useful stuff. What's also nice is that if there's a class I don't want to take, right? Like I could just self-study it on my own and then take the class after it. That way I don't have to spend a semester in a boring class where I'm not actually going to pay that much attention and I'm just wasting my time. And I could take more semesters of good classes, right? It's a win-win situation. And the reason why this feels so good is because at my high school, there's a super strict like system of prereqs. They're literally forcing people to take AP Physics 1 and 2 before they're even allowed to take the AP Physics C, E, and M class. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. What? <laughs> I literally wrote an op-ed on this on the school newspaper, so hopefully they change it, but like, that was so sad. And you guys probably know that like, even beyond like those type of prereqs, they, they force you to take so much stuff throughout the year. You, there's so many requirements you had to satisfy in high school. You literally could only take like one or two electives each year, it's crazy. And even just in terms of flexibility, in terms of what you have to attend, you could literally choose to not attend lecture if you don't want to. The cool thing is that the classes are all divided up into sections, right? There's a lecture section, there's a discussion section, there's a lab section, so you know exactly what you're gonna miss every single day. And you don't, you could like miss certain days, choose to miss it. And you don't have to talk to your teacher like, oh, what did I miss? Oh no, I'm going to fall behind. What, what's going to happen? Like right now, I basically just dip on my 16 and 70 lectures because like, I don't know. I just can't pay attention to lectures. I have a really short attention span. It's kind of weird. I don't know how that happened, but like, I just can't pay attention to lectures. So the way I'm doing it is I'm just like ditching the lectures and then reading the notes after and like working through the homework set. Like that's 50 times more efficient and I learn a lot more. I honestly think that the way that colleges do it is so much better than high school, right? Because different people learn in different ways, and if you let them choose how they learn, then they don't have to waste time if they're not actually going to learn anything from going to lecture. So yeah, colleges are really good in terms of flexibility. I think this is definitely one of the points that high schoolers could learn from because they, they have no flexibility. I don't know. Like, yes, I get that parents sometimes force their kids to take super hard classes, but you're not going to be able to prevent that, right? If a parent's pushing their kids too hard, even your prereq system is not going to prevent that. It's fun. I just think that the college system of, like, having pure flexibility is so much better. Of course, yes, we're adults, but I, I still think it's better. Okay, and now for the last reason why I love college classes so much is because labs and homework are so much more manageable. Dude, <laughs> oh, I hated high school homework. That was literally just grinding like problems from like for two hours. Oh my God. Teachers used to assign the exact same problem like 50 times. It's literally the exact same thing. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm getting, oh, that hurts just thinking about it. God dang. Oh, it feels so good to be out of that. And what's worse about high school classes is that they literally do every class, right? And that happens like twice a week, right? So it's even worse. I don't, I don't get it. Like basically in college classes, the way homework assignments are assigned and graded is that they're assigned weekly, right? And that's really nice in itself because you have a predictable due date and workload and they're graded on correctness, okay? Not completion, which basically means that you can't BS your way through homework and then get wrecked by the test because you didn't do any of the homework throughout the year. And you might be saying, what? If they graded on correctness, then I'm gonna get a zero on all my homework. <laughs> I kind of do it randomly and I don't even check my answers. Well, the nice thing that they do is that they basically round up all 80% to 100 and then like they basically like put the scale from zero to 80. So not like you had to painstakingly review each of your answers, right? But you actually had to know kind of what you're doing. Also, the nice thing about college homework is that you can't slater it. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, because they don't actually take it from a textbook, so if you got slatering it, don't count on it in college. I'm sorry. And the way they do this, like, grade on correctness thing is actually kind of cool. They basically make you self-grade it, and then they spot check randomly just to make sure, like, if you're cheating, then they'll catch you, and then the punishment is pretty bad. So, no, I doubt anybody cheats on self-grades. Seems like not worth it. You might have let us try on the homework, so it really works out well to, like, force people to do the homework and actually learn stuff. And like even beyond how it's assigned and graded, the homework itself is actually interesting. Like I literally had to think on every single CS70 homework that we've had so far, where CS70 is my discrete math and probability class. And I have not thought on homework assignments since like, I don't even know, <laughs> when was the last time I thought on the homework assignment? Okay, fine. Like, since I've taken a alt scores, okay? The problems are that good. Now, the only reason that colleges actually can do, like, interesting homework assignments is because they have, like, massive course staff. There's literally, like, a hundred kids that are working with the professors to put out course content. So, yes, I agree that, like, <laughs> high school are not going to be able to do that, but 
the homework is actually really good. The only bad part is that the homework takes longer, which is a big sad moment. <laughs> I spent like two hours or three hours on my CS70 homework each week. It's kind of bad. But that's probably just because it's harder and more interesting, so I, th I think it's worth it. Also, within this category of labs and homework being interesting, we also gotta talk about labs, right? <laughs> like, in high school, they force you to take, like, 50 bajillion measurements, you don't even know what you're doing, and then you answer a bunch of pointless questions, but, like, in college, the labs are actually really practical, and you learn by legit doing it. Like, for example, in CS labs, we gotta, like, solve Python problems together, we gotta, like, we literally created, like, circuits in, in like, a lab. It's kind of cool. And I already talked about the BioE class, but we literally made a chip already in the first two labs. And we're currently transferring the surface stamp that we made using photolithography on silicon. We're transferring that to PDMS. And then eventually we will have like a microfluidic device that we can actually test. So yeah, labs and homework are super cool in college. So you guys can look forward to that. No more of that nonsense like bash like 50 linear equations again. And lastly, the other great thing about college classes is that it's so much easier to get help when you're struggling in college classes. Now, I've kind of already talked about this, but like in the course staff, right? Those are the people who help out the students. There's literally hundreds of past students, okay? And they host office hours, they host discussions, they host homework parties, and you can literally go to any of these if you're having questions on the homework or struggling with concepts. <laughs> there are also like massive tutoring organizations on campus. Like I'm tutoring for like CSM, which is CS Mentors. And they literally have, I don't even know, they're huge, okay? And even beyond the massive tutoring organizations, they have like Piazza, right? Which is just, you can ask questions to everybody else in the class. The instructors are there too. And you can just ask questions of whatever the heck you want or anything you're confused about. And you get answered really, really quickly. So yeah, those are all the amazing things about college classes. I hope this is like interesting, getting a little bit of a sneak peek into college life. But just to keep this from being a complete glowing compliment to college classes, because there are some problems with it, I think. I don't entirely like the fact that there's literally two tests a year. There's only like one midterm or like max two midterms and one final. And they literally account for 70% of your grade. Also, this is kind of understandable, but classes are a lot more competitive in college because they basically curb it. So... Like, <laughs> depending on how good the other people are, you might get a worse grade. But of course, this makes a lot more sense for a college class because you can't give everybody A's, right? Because then there'd be no point in grades, right? So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a trade-off. But that is all I got for you guys today. I hope it was entertaining. This is what video I wanted to make for a while because it's kind of fun. I don't know. College classes are really cool. But one last thing before I end the video. If you're a high schooler or middle schooler who's kind of bored with high school and wants to try something more advanced or something more interesting or problem-solving focused, I think Brilliant is a really, really good way to do that. Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, has a ton of courses and their focus is on interactivity and problem solving. What's cool about it is that not only is it really fun to do, it literally feels like playing a video game at some point, it also teaches you a lot of really cool skills. Like, I personally wish I did Brilliant in middle school, did all I played was StarCraft too, come on! Like, I'm looking at it now, and they have, like, classes on computational bio, they have quantum mechanics, they have machine learning. I just wish I just took some of them. Like, it, it feels fun. It literally feels like playing. I also went through a couple of the courses myself, and they're good, okay? They, they teach you how to do it, they make you code stuff up, it's really good. So, if you guys are interested in subscribing to Brilliant, I highly recommend it. Make sure to use my link in the description, because that's how Brilliant knows that I'm the one to send you guys. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I am very willing to make whatever the heck you guys want so just let me know but other than that that's all i got for you guys today thank you guys so much for watching again and i will see you next time